Hello everyone and welcome to the Offices of World Literature Today. I'm Marilyn Bell, the Art Director of World Literature Today magazine, and I'm here with my colleague, Editor-in-Chief Daniel Simon. Hi everyone. So we're here to talk to you today about the September issue of the magazine, which is out in bookstores now. We're very excited to announce. And it's also available on our website, worldlit.org where you can find the entire web buildup of our issue online. And you can even now, just this year, become a subscriber to the issue online to have access to all of our content anytime you want it. So we thought we'd get together and talk to you guys about some of the highlights of the issue and give you a little inside scoop on the things that we've published for this edition. And I figured that we could start out talking with the cover itself, which features our... Peterboff fellow, Alain Mabangu. Of course, Alain was here in this past spring at the University of Oklahoma, and he was invited based on his really prestige as a as the preeminent francophone writer in the world mm -hmm. right now, or among the very best of the writers uh, that are out there. He writes in French, obviously. He's born in the Congo, but he's a French citizen and now teaches at UCLA, so he lives in Los Angeles, so he's really a global citizen. But he's won lots of international awards, and last year was a finalist for the Man Booker Prize. So we thought it would be a great time to get him here to be able, for him to be able to meet students and faculty and the general public. And, and really, he's kind of a star on the rise in, in the, in the French-speaking world. Yeah, I think we were really lucky to have him. And I remember from his visit here in the spring that he was actually really personable and very charismatic, very funny. Mm -hmm. um, do you have any highlights from that time of his visit? He has a really big, exuberant personality, yeah. and, and what rem what I remember the most really is the interview that he did in when he was on campus. Mm. It was in a packed lecture hall, and he was very um, kind of free ranging in his mm -hmm. in his topics. And the interview has actually been adapted and transcribed for the issue, so it, it, everyone can read it now. It's called How to Become Globalized Without Losing Your Mind. <laughs> so he's got a great sense of humor as well as a, just a lot of insight about his own uh, sense of crossing borders as, as a writer as well as a citizen of the world. Yeah, so one of our two special sections in the issue is built around his work um, and features writing by Alain, but also writing by some of um, his colleagues and people who study his work, right? Yes, two eminent scholars of Francophone literature came to Oklahoma that same week. We had Lydie uh, Mudileno, who was here from Penn, and she and Dominic Thomas from UCLA, they both gave talks in this Francophone World Workshop series that was part of uh, the Pewterbaugh Festival last spring, and their contributions are now in the issue, so folks can read them there as well. Yeah, and of course, I always love talking about the design aspect of putting together the issue. And we have some really spectacular photos that were taken by our photographer, our favorite photographer, Siobhan Williams. So you can see those not only on the cover, but inside the issue. Here's a little peek at the colorful photos we took here in Norman during a land's visit while he was here. But no more spoilers. You'll have to check it out yourself. And I could just point out one more thing about that, that section, if I may. The interview itself was conducted by... Rokiatu Sumare, who's a PhD mm -hmm. student here at OU, and, and so she did the interview as well as a, a translation of one of Alain's poems. And so for the first time, really, in, in the world, you can read a bit of his poetry in English. So it's, it's kind of a, a feature of the issue as yeah. well. Yeah, really cool. So let's talk a little bit about our other special section, because we actually have two special sections in this issue. Um, and the other one is about writing from the Gulf of Mexico. Right. Gulf Lit is what it's called. There are 10 writers featured mm -hmm. in the in the issue. A friend of mine from grad school, Keith Cartwright, came up with the idea, and he and Dolores Flores Silva, who is from Veracruz but also teaches here in the U.S., they put together the section that features writers from the U.S. South, Cuba, and the Gulf Coast of Mexico. Mm -hmm. So there are 10 writers, mostly poets, but there's an interview in here as well as some other pieces um, that feature this Gulf aesthetic, you might call it. And there's a great um, opening piece of artwork mm -hmm. by a Cuban painter, Arturo Montoto, as well as um, photography by Kathy Vargas in it as well. Mm -hmm. So there's lots of visual um, richness to the issue, Indeed. to the section as well as the writers. I 
learned a lot in reading through this section, a lot of stuff that I had not known before about the writing from the Gulf, but also just the Gulf in general. And I wonder if there are any pieces from the section that taught you something about Gulf Lit. The piece that really stands out to me right now is is Brenda Marie Osby's poem called Death by Water Sweet. Mm -hmm. And it's just thinking of the recent flooding in Louisiana and Katrina 11 years ago. Brenda's writing from New Orleans and she has this aesthetic of, of the sort of the Creole mixture of, of Gulf culture that is both French and Spanish and British as well as African and African American and uh, Native American. So mm -hmm. there are, there, there's a Choctaw writer here in, this, in the issue, Leanne Howe, and another African American poet, Jay Wright. So I think it's really neat how these, these particular writers are put in conversation with other writers from the Gulf region. You don't really think of American writers being as part of that broader Right. Geographical space. Yeah. So I think that's one of the most exciting things about it. And are there any emerging writers in the section or writers that we should sort of be looking out for that are emerging from the Gulf? I would say Brenda's poem. She's she's well established as the poet laureate of Louisiana, a former poet laureate, laureate. So she's really been known for her work for some time now. But there are others, and most of the other writers are pretty well established as well. Jay Wright is really mm -hmm. quite well known as an African-American poet. Um, Leanne Howe is the Choctaw writer who is featured uh, in the issue. So I would just sample all of them and see if there's something that is of particular interest to, uh, to our readers. Yeah, okay. So we have some other highlights from the issue that I think are worth mentioning, briefly mentioning. Mm -hmm. um, so we have, um, you know what, you actually know better than I do what we have. Well, okay. <laughs> so you tell us. <laughs> You don't say. Um, <laughs> the Viet Tan Nguyen yes. interview with Amy Fon and mm -hmm. Andrew Lum. Of course, Viet just won the Pulitzer Prize this, earlier this year for fiction. Mm -hmm. And so we have the three of them in conversation talking about Vietnamese American uh, literature and also about some of the social and historical and cultural aspects of their work that go into that. So that's, that's really kind of a marquee piece for mm -hmm. us as well really an exclusive that uh, we were excited to get. Yeah, and we have the Pewterbaugh essay. The Pewterbaugh essay by Dubravka Ugresic, mm -hmm. who is actually coming to Oklahoma in a couple of months to so be our excited. Newstat Prize laureate yes. for this year. We had previously commissioned this essay by her, and it's really about the public silencing of women, and it's very powerful. It's almost scathing in its critique of patriarchy and a lot of what has been happening in Eastern Europe since the fall of, U of Yugoslavia, which is mm -hmm. where uh, she was born. So, so that's a, another piece to look out for. Yeah, the Skull's the Bridal. Skull's right. Bridal. Complete okay. with super intense photo of an actual Skull's Bridal, which I was really excited yeah. about. Yeah. As much as you can be excited about a Skull's <laughs> right. Bridal. Right. Imagine wearing that. that on your face. Yeah. So. Yeah. So then we have some uh, book reviews, as always. We're always chock full of excellent book reviews. But I think our section is actually longer a little bit this time. Yeah, yeah it's a fuller issue. There's over 100 pages of content, and 30 pages are book reviews. So mm -hmm. there, there's featured reviews. There are the Nota Bene, the short reviews, as well as poetry, fiction, miscellaneous other genres in there as well. It's, it's really kind of a wonderful ongoing feature of the magazine, the, the essays and the book reviews are really the heart of, of what we do at WLT. Yeah. So once you're done reading in print, you have to hop online to worldlit.org so you can view all of the web exclusives from the issue, which include two additional essays by Alain Mabanku, our cover star, as well as uh, some audio poems, right? One of the accompanying features for the Gulf Lit section is a selection of Three, uh, it's a, well, it's two poems, but they're trilingual. And the author, Feliciano Sanchez Chan, mm -hmm. who's from the Yucatec uh, Peninsula, he reads them in Yucatec Mayan, his native language. And then you have the, the original versions, and then you have a Spanish translation as well as an oh. English translation of the poems. So you get to read them and listen to them in the original, which is yeah. really kind of a wonderful um, supplemental yes. aspect. Yes, I always love those audio poems. Yeah. So now we want to hear from you guys. Down below the video that you're watching right now, whether you're doing that on YouTube or joining us on Facebook today, 
you can leave your comments and leave your questions for us. We love answering questions from our readers. If you're watching us on YouTube, you can subscribe to our channel so you're always up to date with the content that we're providing online. Or you can follow us on Facebook, follow us on Twitter. We're kind of everywhere. And we want to be out there with you guys everywhere. So once you check out the issue, be sure to tell us about what you like. Tell us about what you want to see more of from us. And until November, I think that's it for us. I think that's all. Yeah. So we'll see you guys soon. Thanks for watching. Thank you. Bye. Bye.